Happy New Year! It's Mallory from Noisy Forgot Movement. Well, you guys, I couldn't wait to um, share with you um, the message that God gave me um, for the new year, the rich young ruler. There, there's so much happening in this text. This text is very rich, um, but it's a message for now. It's a message for now. As we go into a new year, as we go into a new season, what is it that's at the top of your priority list? What is it that you've put first? What is it that you're chasing after? What is it that you're following after? What is it that you're seeking after? Who are you following? Who are you following? But this year, God is saying, follow me. And there's so much um, that God is saying right now. If we are willing to follow him, if we're willing to incline our ear to him, to hear his voice, there's so much that God is speaking even now. And this is a season where God is pouring out his spirit like never before. This is a season where God is revealing his word as never before. This is a season where God's power can really truly be felt. Old things are beginning to pass away. Some of the old ways of doing things, some of the old methodologies are passing away, but God is releasing a fresh anointing, a fresh mantle, a new season, and he needs new people who are willing and ready, are available to follow him in this season, who are willing and ready to seek after him in this season. He's doing a new thing. And the word that God gave me was follow me. Come and read the text with me. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou will be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel and every one that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life but many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first we are a generation that lives in excess See, the rich young ruler, he had an excessive amount of things, right? He was a ruler. He was rich. He was young. He was blessed abundantly. And whether we know it or not, whether we realize this or not, whether we are willing to receive this or not, we're living in a season of excess. The culture that we live in is just excess. We have more clothes than we need. We eat more food than we need. We have more than we need. We have abundance. And what I love about the story of the rich young ruler is that he was someone who was seeking after God. He was someone who was living a Christian life. And yet the material things had taken a hold of his heart. Unbeknownst to him, but God saw it. Unbeknownst to him, he had become attached, ensnared in the, the material things and the possessions of this world. Material possessions and material things 
they can become a snare even for the good even for those who try to seek after god god can see our heart he wants to perfect us he wants to call us to a deeper level there's deeper depths that god wants to take us as he told his disciples he said verily verily i say it to you it's easier for a camel to enter it through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven his disciples marveled. They were shocked when Jesus said such a strong thing. But that is a sharp warning to us that the material gain, the things that they put before us, for us to eye, for us to covet, for us to lust after, can hinder us. Why seek after something that can keep you from Jesus? It's time for us to reset our mentality. It's time for us to reset our goals. And this time, we must truly put God at the top. See, it's real easy to say that God is your priority. It's real easy to say that God is first. But when it comes time to sacrifice, when it comes time to do, when it comes time to let things go, when God says, let some things go, hallelujah, hallelujah, that is where we can see our hearts. We can see what we value most when it comes time to sacrifice. Child of God, are you willing to sacrifice? Hallelujah for the God that you say you love and the God that you say you serve. Child of God, are you willing to let some things go? Hallelujah, when God speaks to your heart and he tells you to let some things go, let some people go, let some situations go, are you willing to let it go to follow him? Or will you be like the rich young ruler who turned away sorrowfully as we enter into a new year? It's not about what you are going to obtain. Hallelujah. It's about what you're going to release. There's some things this year that, oh, mama, ma shanta na 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 bosi. There's some things this year that God wants you to release. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is wanting you to release some things this year. There's some things that God wants you to let go of. He says, these things keep you from following me. You can't follow after those things and follow after God. If you will have me, if you want me, child of God, God is saying, if you want to be made perfect in me, if you want to be made whole, some of you all are praying for some things. God is saying, there's things that you're going to have to release first. If you will be made perfect, if thou shalt be made perfect Hallelujah, hallelujah. I hear the Lord saying, return to sender. Eshea. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's some things that you received in your life that God didn't give you. God is saying, send it back. Let it go. Let it go and follow me. Follow me. Right before this story, Jesus was in Judea. He was performing miracles and doing what he does. And there were children who came to him. And the Bible says that the disciples wanted to send them away. But Jesus said, no. Unless you all come to me like these children do, you won't see eternal life. Unless we come to God in the truth. Unless we come to God humble. Unless we come to God thirsty and hungry and in need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we won't find him. That is something that our generation struggles with. We struggle because like the rich young ruler, we have too much. We have too much. God has been good to us and we have too much. We have too much. We have excess. We live in excess and we don't have a need for God. What do I need him for? I can get it my own way. If he's not willing to do it, I'm gonna make it happen my own way. We don't come to God as children. We don't come to God in our brokenness. We walk into the church today and say, God, you're going to take me as I am. We're trying to tell God what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. So many of us don't want to follow him anymore. Hallelujah. We want God to follow us. We want God to follow our path and make it happen for us. We're not willing to forsake anything to follow God. We walk into the church. We throw railing accusations at the body of Christ. Christ and at the word of God, we take and pick 
from his word. Uh, I call it Burger King Christianity. Have it my way. I want to have it my way. I want to personalize it. And I want to pick and choose which pieces of God's word apply to me. I want it my way. But God is saying no. Unless you come to me as a little child. A little child. They are not in control. A little child has to follow the will of their father and mother. A little child is told lovingly what to do. A little child comes humble, asking for what they need. Unless we can come to him like that. Unless we can come to him like that. We will continue to hinder the move of God in our lives. We will not see the move of God in our generation, hallelujah, like we want to because of our pride and our arrogance and our material possessions and our materialistic mindsets. They keep us from experiencing the fullness of what God has for us. One of the things I love about testimonies is that people reveal the truth of where they were when God met them and transformed them. But in our generation, we're getting used to wearing a mask. We're getting used to having a facade. We're getting used to playing make-believe and playing pretend. We won't come to God and our truth is in our iniquity, is in our sinfulness that God meets us and that's what he came to save us from. He didn't die on a cross for people who were perfect. He died on the cross for our sin. Jesus said, they that are whole have no need of a physician, but they that are sick, hallelujah. I come not to call the righteous, but the sinners. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. God came for sinners. I don't know about you, but I'm wretched without him. I don't know about you, but I'm broken without him. I don't know how you feel, but I need him every day of my life. I don't know how you feel about his grace and his mercy. Hallelujah, but I seek a double portion of that. Hallelujah, this is where, hallelujah, hallelujah, this is where God comes in. Hallelujah. Don't be like the rich young ruler, letting all of that stuff separate you. Hallelujah. From God's presence. Yeah. Hallelujah. You see, this text is counterculture. It's truly counterculture. It's not the fake kind of counterculture that we feel like today. Oh, I'm breaking down religious walls, not even knowing what religion is. It's not the fake counterculture of, you know, wearing ripped jeans in the pool pit and having tattoos and piercings. And we think that that's counterculture. And, but really we're walking in a spirit of rebellion. No, that is not what God is talking about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, 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 no. But this text is real counterculture. Hallelujah. This text challenges our thought process. It challenges our reality of what we see. It challenges the way that we uh, understand success. It challenges our complete value system. It challenges everything around us, societal norms. This text does. Because Jesus says you can't bring any of that. Oh my God, you can't bring any of that. Hallelujah. If you're trying to follow me. If you're trying to follow me, I'm going to make you drop everything. Hallelujah. If you're trying to follow me, God is saying, hallelujah, you're going to have to let it all go. You can't carry that. Hallelujah. And follow me. This is counter culture. It's contrary to our reality. It's contrary to, to being big and being famous and being rich and having huge houses and having lots of things and being perfect in this world god is saying you're gonna have to let all of that go if you want to find me you're gonna have to let all of that go hallelujah and let me redefine success for you as i come to the end of this video i would like to read this passage of scripture it's so powerful and it is truly the essence of what god is challenging us to do Paul said, 
Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, which is of God by faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Child of God, will you follow Jesus this year? Oh, my Lord, he's looking to do a transformation unto perfection in your life. Hallelujah. A, a transformation in our hearts and in our minds, the way that we think, the way that we see God wants to do a transformation in this generation. God wants to change some things in this generation. Hallelujah. God wants to open blinded eyes. Hallelujah. In this generation, God wants to heal in this generation. Child of God. Hallelujah. Will you let him have his way? Will you forsake everything and follow him? Hallelujah. In the process of following God. Hallelujah is how we are made perfect. Hallelujah. It is through his righteousness and no righteousness, no goodness, no thing that we can do on our own that we are made whole. Hallelujah. With our power, it can't be done. It's impossible. But with him, with God, all things are possible. It's time to go deeper. It's time to go deeper. It's time to push this year. It's time to reach this year. There is more that God has for us. He's asking us to follow him.